power for supernatural living part two God is not partial scripture said this same Lord is good unto all and blesses all that calls upon his name What he says to one is what he says to all. There is no one God say you will live long and this one will live short. Everyone God has created, he gave a ticket of long life. So you now you have a ticket of long life and you will live long. Amen. Say that amen louder. Yes, long life is your heritage and your rights. But what you know determines how long you live. What you know determines how long you live. If you don't know it, you may not live long. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Anyone you see living long and living well is commanding a dimension of secrets. And I've discovered that secrets are personal. They are not common to all. You can have it and someone will be struggling to know it. That's why scripture says, they know not. Neither will they understand. All the foundation of the earth are out of course. When you don't know it, things will go off course. And he said again, and they shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So what you don't know may be the reason why things are eating you up. Secrets is what makes for masteries. Secrets is what makes you a commander. Secret is what makes you a ruler. So when you command secrets, you are in charge of life. God puts you in control. You don't just stay and begin to fear whether you will die or whether you will live. No! By predestination, you have been ordained to live long and fulfill your days. So anyone you see living long now, someone has taught him something. Someone has showed him a secret. Someone has revealed to him what brought him to where he is. And as we tap into these secrets, just like we were made to understand in the first service, God did not only intend us to live long, he also intended us to live well. If you must live long, you must live well. If you must live long, you must do what? Live well. Why? People that live long and are not living well, they are tired of life. They are frustrated. They say, what am I really living for? I just feel like dying. You hear it from them. Do you know the problem? They have not discovered the secret of living long and living well. In the first service, we looked at four different points. Now we are taking another four with others which we are going to learn in this service. In the first service, we talked about taking less sugar and more fruit. Some people like drinking Coke. Coke in the morning, Coke in the afternoon, Coke in the night. That is 24 sugar per day. Which means in five days, you have taken how many sugar? 100. 120. You are correct. So if you swallow 120 sugar every five days, 
it will accumulate and very soon you will catch diabetes. You will now be looking for the winch that fired the thing for you. Why you are the one that bewitched yourself. We also said again, less word and more action. Toko Toko is, doesn't give certificates. Have you seen where a commentator won an award? Commentator. Who is a commentator? He knows how to analyze people's issue. And we have them plenty in church. Too much talking will open a door for affliction. In a multitude of words, sin is not lacking. A fool, even when he keeps quiet, is regarded as a wise man. A fool, a fool, because he kept quiet. If you must live long and see more better days, scripture says you must keep your mouth from speaking guys. Just stay and begin to talk rubbish. The one you are sure, the one you are not sure, just be putting your mouth in everything. You are buying debt. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death, and them that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. So the one you want, begin to call it. So if your mouth is, is giving to too much talking, you are calling death. You will not know. Talk less, do more. We also said in the first service, less of worry and more of sleeping. I didn't say you should go and be sleeping 12 hours per day. Oh. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Nah? If you spend all your life 12 days sleeping, ah. <laughs> a major aspect of your life is you spend sleeping. Are you hearing me now? Less worry. Worry brings depression. Worry destabilizes the hormone in your body. Worry affects your memory. Worry. It's like the two words go together. Worry, memory. But scripture says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a dry spirit crushes the bone. So when, when you begin to worry too much, your systems collapse. I've discovered that people that worry too much, they don't think well. Go and find out. People that worry over unnecessary things, they don't think well. They are not coordinated in their thinking. At that point, you begin to suffer what we call memory loss. But God will heal you today. Amen. The last one that we took in the first service is less soda, more water. Why? Our body has more components that are acidic in nature. So the more you take water, the more you reduce the pH level. The acidic composition of your body is reduced. All our food are acidic. Most of our food, acid, acid, acid. That's why if you check your urine in the morning, <laughs> you will see acid. It's smelling, it's smelling like amino acid. Check your urine in the morning. Amino acid. So every time you are taking water, you are reducing the pH level of your body. Less soda. What is soda? What is soda? Carbonated water. To, redu to further reduce the soda in your body, oh, we are like I said in the first service, plateau state is one of the most blessed states in this country, even in the world. But some people don't know. All the food that they are exporting, exporting to Lagos, cabbage, this one, cucumber, hey, hey, hey. Now from here they come. Now where? And the people here, ignorance, no greed here. The same water you drink, you can put lemon. You can put a... What's the, what do they call that? Grape. It's helping to reduce the acidic composition of your body. But some people, they don't see it as value. What is this one? Yeah, yeah. 
It doesn't mean anything to them. But you understand why later. Like we discussed in the first service, if you have value, vision for your life, you will think it and you will do it. Now, number five, less anger, more laughter. Some people have anointing for anger. When they get angry, they will be sweating and their hand will be doing like this. Two of us. It will be vibrating. That anger is demonic. Scripture says anger dwells in the bosom of fools. Why must I die before my time? So anger can kill you before your time. Do I get angry plenty times? But if I get angry, I just wave it, just finish. The moment I finish the anger, I don't finish that one. I continue my work. Because if anger catches you, you can't pray. If anger catches you, your creativity is impeded. You can't think straight again. Hear me? Anytime anger catches a hold on you, the next thing that will be coming to your mind is revenge. Revenge. I go do and back. I go do and back. That's why in church they plot evil against each other in church. You are not a witch. Are you know what I'm saying now? Huh? Is it no anger that makes uh, Abel to kill his brother? It's anger. What will your brother do against you now that you go and say, I will show you today. If I don't show you, I'm not going to rest. It's not necessary. You will just waste your life quick, quick. And check it, any time you are angry, you spoil things. You spoil things. So you can break plates. You can slap your wife. In fact, your children, they are in trouble. Anytime you are angry. If you are angry, don't drive. You can have accident. Because your mind is not on the steering. <coughs> True or false, okay? Yes, now they say if you are angry, if you are... If you drink, don't drive. You are angry, don't drive. Anger is terrible. Any person that is angry, if he comes to work, he will be the only person that will spoil the whole work that day. Am I correct? Check any of your staff that didn't do well any day. Go and check it. Something is troubling that staff. So just exempt the person Go and quarantine the person in one corner. I hear what I'm saying, huh? So that the anger will leave the person before we come back. Number six is less meat, more vegetable. Let me shock some people now. Some people are angry. Why will you talk about meat? Now, who need meat? children. The moment they cross 21, they won't be needing it again. It's now left for the others. But if you see some people, if you see their food, hey, my God. No space for the soup. Should I tell you something? It's not a design. It's a sign that you don't know what to eat. For an adult like you, Is it shaki? The towe. Cow tail. Cow leg. Simple. You don't need blood meat again. It's the children that need it. My wife knows. If she buys blood, I say, You didn't see meat? Or the one we have is finished in the fridge? He says, It's very plenty. I say, Okay, that's the only condition that I will eat more. Are you know what I'm saying now? That's why if they kick out, I'm not interested. You can carry everything. But leave that side for me. I know what I want. 
Are you know what I'm saying now? You don't need blood meat. Don't go and be struggling. Don't go and be struggling. Give me plenty. Give me plenty. Give me plenty. You don't need it. Some people are angry with me. Oh. <laughs> Just be chopping. You are going slowly. You are putting more pressure on your liver and your kidney. And if you put too much pressure on them, they will retire quick. And they are retiring quick means you are gone. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Now, the reason for the uh, more vegetable is to help keep your system on less pressure. Less pressure. Some people will never agree to this one. Some people even eat pig meat. Pig meat takes a minimum of seven hours to digest. You eat it in the morning, eat it in the afternoon, eat it in the evening. Carry over digestion. <laughs> Carry over digestion. You are in trouble. All your whole system is loaded with fat. Your head fat. Your cheek fat. Your neck fat. <laughs> you are not living well. And you can't live long. And you know when your heart begins to accumulate fat. You are in trouble. Your heart begins to go through pressure. It will lead to what we call cardiac arrest. But vegetable, do you know that vegetable helps to burn the fat in your body? Please, I beg you, it is cheap in jaws. Even if I moved out of this jaws now, my lifestyle cannot reduce. Can never reduce. You can live cheap without living expensive. That's what some people don't know. You can live cheap without living expensive. They see it as luxury, so that's why it is luxury. I hope you know that health is one of the most expensive gifts. You don't know. You can have billions. If you don't have health, you are gone. You labored for somebody else. That's why you see people whose health are correct and they have money. They are careful what they eat. See somebody like Copeland said that he's preparing for his next 40 years anointing. Above 80, oh, you will just be swallowing everything up and down as if you are dying tomorrow morning. <laughs> be careful. At 80, he's still powering his plane. He has an assistant pilot still powering his plane. He said, any when he's tired, any place they reach, he will go and rest first before they continue the journey. How many old men can drive from here to Abuja? 80 years. More vegetable, less meat. And lastly, Less driving, more walking. I heard Papa say this, but they learned it sometime. It's only when he's in Canaan land, he drives in the midnight. But then all, all people will die so that he can go for his prophetic walk. But if he's on any journey, he doesn't drive. I learned that from Pastor Jennings. I said, why? He said, it keeps you coordinated. You are able to think. Because when you are staring, all your senses are alert. Are you what I'm saying now? And when your systems, everything is under pressure, you can make one mistake. Have you ever seen me drive? I'm traveling and I drive. I won't drive. Even when they say, ah, sir, the money you are paying, the driver says, I say, I'm paying so that I will relax. You think I cannot drive to Abuja? I can't know, but I've learned lesson. 
have learned the ways of our fathers. Don't you know that driving is stressful? Oh, you think it's luxury? <laughs> it's not luxury. Do you know that you can slip off a steering? Ah, it has happened before. Can slip off a steering. So be careful. Walking is one of the awesome exercises. Not that uh, you are running as if you are going to uh, run Olympics. You are not going for any Olympics. Just be walking. I see some of our members. I'm excited when I see them walking. Just walking. Just walk. Walking is... Even if you can't go outside, you can be walking around your compound. Do it 30 times. Do it 40 times. Once or twice every month. Every week. Are you around saying that? Huh? Walking gets every part of your body involved. You may not be doing like this. Or as you are walking, you are swinging your hand. Something is happening. A change is taking place. Activity is moving. Are you around saying now? Very important. If you must live long, you must plan also to live well. Tell your neighbor I will live long. And I will also live well. So, if you say that uh, uh, they will laugh at you if you come to the main road, walk around your house. Go like this, turn back. Go like this, turn back. Don't look for any main road to walk Walk inside your compound. In Jesus' name. You can turn it into a prophetic walk. As you are walking, you are speaking in tongues. You don't know that speaking in tongues helps to burn fat from your body too. <laughs> it's part of the spiritual work. Oh, you don't know? I'm telling you the truth. It helps to burn things out of your body. It's part of the spiritual work. A change is taking place. Oh, you think that all those uh, walking around Canaan land that Papa is doing is just for fun? You think he's only speaking in tongues? He's keeping his body fit. Oh, you don't know? You have had it from me now. You will walk, go to Faith Academy, to uh, Secretary uh, Admin Gates, you will come back to Main Gates, you will go, you will turn again. He's not only prophesying, he's keeping his body fit. Body fit. If you must live long, you must have a vision for health. Vision. Where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. You aspire. Visionless people are frustrated people. I don't tire for life. Life too don't tire for you. Where there is no vision, you talk careless. Live careless. Do things carelessly. But because of where you want to reach, you are cautious. I've discovered that visionaries, they are cautious people. They don't do things anyhow. Go and check it. People that have vision for life, they are cautious. They mind what they say. They mind where they go. They mind what they eat, where we, who they work with. You must be careful. Vision for living delivers from hopelessness, from weariness. When you have a vision for living, you are never hopeless. Why? Because there is something your eyes have seen which your hand must lay hold on to. When you have a vision for living, you are always at peace. What somebody has is not troubling you. What somebody has is not giving you sleepless nights. Because you are sure that your own will come. Have a vision for living. It's a question of time. God programmed our life and destiny in times and in season. This can be the person's time and season. Your own time and season will come. But if you don't understand this, you go and carry depression. Lord, are you sure you are seeing where? We are the first sanctuary member in LFC Refit. Why will you bless this person ahead of me? Lord, you are not trying. In fact, because of that, I'm not coming to church again. <laughs> in fact, that's where the death is waiting for you proper. Are you not saying now? You need vision for living. 
When you have vision for living, you will not be living a life of competition. We are not living as rivalries. All fingers are not equal. Every one of us have different time of arrival. Have a vision. God is taking you face by face. God is taking you little by little. Amen. Whatever you have seen in any person can also take place in your life. Papa. You don't go and begin to get angry. No, in just a show, in just a show. When your own come to show, please, I beg you, if your own come to show, in Jesus' name, as your own come, please show people too. In Jesus' name. I remember I went for mission inspection in one particular place. They told me, we saw one um, old one-story building. They told me that 20 years ago that this were the main, main house. But if you see the house now, it looks like a museum. The house has expired. It has been overtaken by technology. New things are taking place. And they told me that that's the deputy governor's village. Now, should I tell you something? Then, they were raining. Now, they have expired. How many of us know 404? Those days, if you have 404, you are the king of the road. But now, 404 is meant for bush markets. <laughs> Three of us? If you have 404 now, they only hire you to go and carry vegetables from the village. Praise God. Have a vision for living. Have a vision for living. If you lack vision for living, you will weary yourself before your time. But if you have vision for living, you'll be taking it one at a time. You are not struggling. You are not struggling. You don't go and tear out yourself because you want to get something. Have a vision for living. Vision for living preserves us from disaster. You don't just suddenly fall into error. Why? You are sure it will come. You are sure that God will put it in your hand. Vision for living fuels vitality and increases focus. Vision for living increases your vibrancy. I've discovered that visionary people, they are always excited of what is about to take place in their life always excited so never you live if you want if you must live long and live well you must live it with vision not just live carelessly not just live carelessly we were talking about uh, the story of a young man he entered the university because he didn't have a vision for living. As the only child, though, the only child and the only son, he went to join court. They kid him. They kid him, waste him. Lack of vision. Lack of vision. He wasted. He, in fact, he aborted his family generation. Lack of vision. Check it. It's only people that lack vision that behaves anyhow. Right? Prove me wrong. It's only people that lack vision that behaves anyhow. If you, are, if you have a vision, you'll be cautious. If not, Satan is setting a trap that must catch you. Satan is setting a trap that will catch you. And since you want to live jaga jaga, he knows that you will put your leg. Number is it number five or number six? Okay. It's identity. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. Your identity determines your authority. 
your identity influences your longevity. You are not just living as a human being. You are born of God. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. And he that is born of the spirit is spirit. Your identity. People that have discovered their identity, they see beyond the now. And God will only take you as far as your eyes can see. Identity. Your identity makes you to understand that you are not here as a failure. You are here as a super success. So you don't only succeed financially, you also succeed in health. The reason for identity is so that Satan will not cheat on you on any aspect. No one that David voiced out because he has discovered. He said, I shall not die, but live. To do what? Declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall not die. He said, with long life, will he satisfy me and show me his salvation? How long is your long? Everyone will define his long. Everyone will do what? Define his long. We had the papa say the other day that uh, I'll still be here when my children, children will still be ministry. Oh, I long to see that kind of one too. When I'll just sit down and Jesse will be the one preaching. When he will be commanding, they will fall down and die. <laughs> be healed in Jesus' name. I long to see it. And I will see it too. God will give to you as far as your eyes can see. Identity influences how far you can see. People that lack identity, they don't see good. They only see bad. They only see bad coming. They don't see good coming. Now, Pastor Bayadeh, Will a lion be afraid when he's sleeping that uh, one bed will fly and come into the house? Why will he not be afraid? A lion is a lion, wake or asleep. In fact, if the bed mistakenly sight the lion, he will do like, he will do like, <laughs> and fly off. So that by mistake, let him not wake. Are you hear what I'm saying now? A lion is a lion not in the skin, but in the heart. What makes a lion is not the skin, the heart. So you must discover your identity. So that no devil anywhere will open their ugly mouth and tell you you will see. The person will never live to see. How can somebody tell you you go see? Pray for me. Oh. This person is terrible in this our village. Oh. He tell me, say, I go see. Remember I told my member, go back. Tell that person, your pastor also say, she too, she go see. When she had, <laughs> you go, the same you go see. She followed the person to church. <laughs> she came to the church. Now, do you know what came upon her? Something more terrible is about to happen to her. She has been used to terrorizing people, but she met another terrorist. Your identity exempts you from fear. Delivers you from fear. Satan can only threaten who he can manipulate, not who he cannot manipulate. One of our brother, my friend, who graduated from the same fellowship on campus, a German told the mother, by the time I'm back, you are sacked. Guess what? The brother went to report the man to their pastor. 
The pastor just held hand and prayed for him. He said, go and take this hand that I've anointed and put it in the hold of his office. The German never came back. He died of malaria. Malaria killed him in Germany, in Frankfurt. Which means he catch malaria, yeah? Go die for there. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying, huh? Say, your, say to your neighbor, identity. identity. If you lack identity, you will not last long. You will be held perpetually in fear. Number five, number six now. I'll be number seven. Now, I want you to understand this. Your word of blessing affects you first. So bless yourself. My body is blessed. My soul is blessed. My future is blessed. My destiny is blessed. Bless yourself. Speak to yourself. Scripture even said we should speak to ourselves. We should speak to ourselves. In psalm, in words, in hymns, with spiritual songs. Bless yourself. Bless your children. If you bless them, it will stick. In Genesis 27, we read it the other day, when Esau came, he said, I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. But still, the good news is that the same blessing Jacob collected, Esau also collected. Bless yourself. Don't talk evil about your life. Don't speak evil about your future. It's, if not, it must happen. You will see it. Bless yourself. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. They overcame him by the word. Of the what? They overcame him by the words of their testimony. So if you must be triumphant, if you must be victorious, in life, your words contributed. So speak life. Don't talk death. Speak life. Keep declaring it. Speak life. Keep talking life. The peak of your life is the peak of your speech. If you are going low in life, you are speaking low to yourself. Speak life. I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist nor gain say. And God again say, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Do you want to live long? Keep speaking life. Talk life. Talk life. Don't talk frustrated. Don't talk stagnated. Don't talk like one depressed of the devil. Speak life. David said, why that that cast all my soul? Why that disquieted within me? He said, well, yeah, praise the Lord. Speak life. Your life which is with you, call it out. You are a tanker of life. Because you carry the treasure, the tank of the Holy Ghost, call life, call life. Whatever God wanted, he called it. He called those things that be not as though they are. Speak life. Stop talking death. Men are don't tired for this life. Everywhere I just jam like roadblock. You go see him. Anything you say, you go see him. Scripture says, say not before an angel is an error. Be careful what you say. Bless yourself. My day is blessed. Today I will be superly favored. The heavens are opening for me. I will enjoy the goodness of God. I will enjoy the blessings of God. You are blessing your life. Don't curse yourself. Some people have the habit of cursing themselves unconsciously. And you know what? Whether you did it unconsciously or unconsciously, it's still coming to pass for you. Be careful. And lastly, is the power of the communion. The communion is our service. It's fortifies, it re-engrafts, it reshapes. Now, if a car is to go 
a long distance, the first thing they will ask, have you serviced the car? The reason for the servicing of the car is to make sure that it can be able to power you that distance. No wonder the angel said to the prophet, he said, it for the journey is still far. People that will truly go far, see what is taking them far. The communion. And Jesus said, he that eats my flesh and drink my blood shall live forever. So the communion prolongs our living. It's like, let me put it this way so that you understand it. Every time we partake of the communion, our health insurance policy is renewed. We are renewing our health insurance. We are renewing our license for longevity. We are servicing the systems in our body to function well. We are enhancing the capacity of our lungs, of our kidney, of our intestine for greater delivery. Are you wrong saying now? Why? The life of the flesh is in the blood. He that eats my flesh. Now hear me, what the flesh will do is to upgrade our strengths. Our natural strength cannot truly carry us. What really is driving us is the mind of God. The might of the spirit, so that you understand better. Our natural strength is limited in how far it can go, but the communion gives us an empowerment, an impartation to go further. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And the blood comes like a spiritual defense. Against arrows. <laughs> I just remember I gave someone communion. He vomited the poison and swallowed. Just vomited the poison. Do you know why? His fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor. And burn with unquenchable fire. By the communion, he flushed out the poison. He vomited the poison. Bah! was shocked how the thing came out in the communion is the presence the communion is a carrier of the presence and wherever his presence is known divinity is announced so every time we are taking the communion we are re-announcing the fullness of the presence of god and wherever God is, Satan will disappear. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will deliver. So sickness cannot survive your body. I say sickness cannot survive your body. Two captains cannot be in one boat. One must disappear for the other. So every time you are taking the blood, the presence of God is announced. But should I say something? You must be conscious of this fact before it must work for you. You must be conscious of this fact before it must do what? Work for you. You must be conscious of this fact. Another thing you must understand, the communion empowers our memory. It enhances physical and spiritual intelligence. Scripture says when he gave them the communion, their eyes were open. So it enhances your mental intelligence. Anyone suffering from... Mem oh, I remember one of our sisters, she traveled. She traveled to London recently. Now, the, the daughter was not doing well in school. Every of our communion service, she will bring the picture and be doing, giving the picture communion. Guess what? From bottom, she climbed up. From carrying last, she began to confess. She couldn't help but shedding tears of joy. As it was happening to her, it was happening to the other one in, in uh, Dublin. This God is awesome. You will miss it again. Yeah. And lastly, the communion is a dissolver of enchantments. 
is a dissolver of enchantment. They might have enchanted you. You don't even know where they enchanted you. Where they carried your picture or where they mention your name or where they write your name on paper and drop. The communion. Scripture says, since thou hated blood, even blood shall do what? Pursue thee. The blood will pursue your enemies. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And lastly, whoever wants to use your head, they will go for you. Amen. Do you know why? Jesus has shed his blood, so your blood does not need to be shed for anybody. He says, see thou art precious in my sight, and I have loved thee. I will give the life of men as a ransom for thee and people for thy life. A brother shared a testimony in first service. He's staying with a family who is supposed to be a relative. Not knowing that they have planned how they will kill him. And he said he attended the spiritual week of emphasis on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. The poison food that they prepared for him. The man's son came and ate the food and died. And the father himself, both of them are in the mortuary. I've been saying it. God will not stop confirming it. Whatever your enemy has planned for you, they will be victims of their own plan. So the blood is a dissolver of enchantments. They might have fired an arrow against your life or against your destiny, but as you partake of the communion, it returns back to sender. Rise up to your feet now. Smith Wigglesworth was eating communion every day. Every day. Every day. No sickness. No sickness. He was not taken to hospital one day. No sickness. Every day communion. Every day communion. Every day communion. Every day communion. No sickness. Father, as I partake of this communion, whatever want to swallow me, let it be swallowed up. Restore total health to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever want to kill me, whatever want to eat me up, let it be swallowed up. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore total health to me. Restore total health to me in the name of Jesus Whatever wants to devour me, whatever wants to eat me up, whatever wants to devour me, whatever wants to eat me up, restore my life. Let the programming of the wicked be aborted. I take my total recovery. I refuse to be wasted. By this communion, I take back my total life, total health. In the name of Jesus, my kidney, my lungs, every part of my body, my, my intestines, they are healed. My heart is healed. My lungs are healed. Every part of my being. By the power of the flesh and the blood. Whatever God has not planted, let them be flushed out. Lift up your voice and pray. Whatever God has not planted, let them be flushed out. Let them be flushed out. Let them be flushed out. I take total delivery of every appointed blessing in the communion. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. Come, come, come. Inside and outside, if you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. You don't need to be ashamed. You have disgraced the devil. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. Put those hands together for Jesus. Lord Jesus, unto them that come unto you, shall we in no wise cast out. He has identified Jesus as his Lord and his Savior. I decree every curse of the devil over your life is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Follow this man. Eh? He will come back now.
As you partake of this communion, whatever God has not planted that is eating you up, they will be flushed out. I judge every arrow fired against you through dream. Satanic poison, witchcraft injection, expire now in the name of Jesus. He said, my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. As you partake of this communion, every programming of untimely death is aborted. Every programming of untimely death is aborted. As you partake of this communion, whatever is not working well, anything that they say is not working well, by the authority of the flesh and the blood, they will begin to walk well. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the day they will do the hand life. Amen. Prosperity. Amen. You will not live long and be regretting long life. Amen. You will live long and you will live well. Amen. God will satisfy you with abundance. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your testimonies cannot be denied. The prophecy, my case is different, will be fully fulfilled in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus name we pray. My case is different. Because I'm the redeemer of the Lord. And as a covenant child, what afflicts others is not permitted to afflict me. Congratulations. God bless you.